I would like to show you how game theory relates to economic modeling because I highly recommend learning to build your own economic models from scratch. And once you've done that, you get kind of excited and you want to build some more. And the most fun types of models to build are strategic models relating to people or two groups of people. So the first thing we need to remind ourselves, what is game theory? And in particular, what is Nash equilibrium? And I like to define Nash equilibrium as a no regrets outcome, where both players or however many players there are, can look at the situation at the end of the day and say, given the way this turned out, I'm really happy with my choice. It's a no regrets equilibrium. Now, the other way of saying that is both players' choices are a best response to the other player. And that means we're going to be working with best response functions. So let me set up a problem right now and then I'll explain how game theory and economic modeling work together. And you can tell I'm doing this as a game theory problem between a busser and a server at a restaurant where the busser cleans the tables and the server, of course, serves the meals, but the server gets tips from customers and the server decides at the end of the day, how much from my own tips do I want to give to basically tip the busser? So that's the, that's the setup. And of course, the choices that are going to matter between these two people are going to be the busser deciding how clean to make the tables because you know it's it's effort to make tables really clean and then the server is going to decide what percentage of his or her tips it w will go to the busser so let's set this up okay so let's read these models and then I'll talk about how these relate um, using game theory. So basically we have the busser is deciding how clean to make the tables and the busser is doing that to optimize the objective function which is payment to from the server, how many tips you get from the server at the end of the day. And that is of course a function of how clean the tables are. This is the server presumably will tip you more or give you more payment at the end of the day if you have a cleaner table. And of course, why, what's the cost of doing that? The cost is the effort of making the table clean. Now, the, this is not complete. We're actually going to need to change some variables to connect these, but I'm just showing you the basic process. So the server here is deciding what percentage of her tips she gives to the busser. And of course, um, she cares basically about her own money, so she cares about the total tips she gets from customers which is a function of how clean the tables are. Now we notice there's the, this connection between the models and how clean the tables are depends on how many tips, uh, the, the percentage of her tips that she generally gives the busser for clean behavior. And how much does she get to keep? Well, she gets to keep 100% minus the percent of tips that she gives to the busser. So this is essentially the cost. No, th this is not complete. I'm going to need to change some of these variables, but before I do, I want to show you how the models connect. And the models connect because the choice variable to the busser, this cl how clean the table is going to be, matters somehow in the server's objective function. And similarly, the server's choice, her choice variable of what percentage of tips to give the busser matters for the busser. And because each of their choices matters for the other person, um, th there's going to be an interaction between these models. And we'll see how that plays out. So now, one thing I want to notice here is I have percentage of tips going to the busser. And up here I have payment from server. And these two kind of relate to each other. As a matter of fact, I could even sort of um, erase that and call this T and that would still kind of make sense that the benefit to the busser is the busser will get a higher percentage of the tips for uh, you know for cleaning the tables well. Now as a behavioral economist I would probably also add a reciprocity term to both of these um, because I think a lot of what's going on between the server and the busser is that they're friends, they see each other every day, and they have a sense of reciprocity with each other. But I'm not going to add the reciprocity term just yet. I will at the very end, because I want to keep this simple to show you the concepts. So, okay, here we have um, the choice variable of the server 
is a choice variable down here and it's an endogenous variable up here. It's actually a benefit up here. The choice variable to the busser is a choice variable here and it is endogenous down here. It's actually part of the benefit down here. And that is going to be the feature of game theory when it shows up in economic models is that the choice variable is choice variable here, endogenous down here somewhere, and there's this interaction. Now another way of thinking about this is that when each player makes their optimal choice, like if I came down here to the server's model, I could take the first order conditions, I could do a whole bunch of math, and at the end of the day what it is going to spit out is the optimal choice of what percentage of your tips should you give the busser? Now, that is going to be a function of uh, how clean the busser makes the table, which is, of course, a function of the, the tips. So this becomes this sort of like weird um, optimal choice is a function of this, which is a function of this, and that looks kind of weird until you realize, wait a second, the same thing's going on up here and I didn't leave enough room for this, but you take the first order conditions of this, what you get is the optimal choice of how clean should you make the tables, and that is going to be a function of the percentage of tips you get from cleaning the tables, which is a function of how clean you make the tables. So these two functions right here, they look kind of self-contradictory, they look a little bit weird right now. But we notice that actually there's sort of this interaction between the two, where if you can find a spot that's, that's an equilibrium according to both of these, then uh, you've solved this game theory problem using an economic model. Now, when students first learn this, generally you're going to actually have a functional form, in which case you just plug the two equations into one another and it's easy to solve. But um, I, I tend to model with generic models because it's way more flexible in terms of shaping how you think about the whole situation. So th the purpose of this video is really how does game theory relate to economic models? And the answer here is um, economic models are going to spit out best response functions, right? Like best response says your optimal choice, the optimal choice of your choice variable, how clean to make the tables, is a function of the other person's choice, which is a function of your choice. And that's true for both players. So there's this interactive thing that will lead eventually to Nash equilibrium. So the key here is the best response functions. Let me write that on the board just to be clear. So just to summarize, at the end of the day, we, we have the, the solution to each player's model is going to give us a best response, which is a function of the other person's choice, which is a function of your own choice. So that's the key here is the best response functions. And then the key in terms of the way they appear in models is that choice variable in one person's model is endogenous in the other person's model, and that that goes both ways. Choice variable for one person's model is endogenous in the other player's model.